First time I came to Japan, 1990 World Amateur Championships. It was very eye-opening for a young 16-year-old Rob to be exposed to Japanese lifestyle and food and waves. It was really cool. I came back in 94 and then I, ever since 94 I probably came almost every year, sometimes twice a year. The waves in Japan are very uh, similar to, I'd say, like waves in California. Well, we've all seen footage of absolutely mind-boggling waves here. You know, I think when typhoons hit and, you know, the conditions all align, it can be incredible. But on your average, everyday kind of basis, we're riding waves that are, um, maybe don't have a ton of power. You know, there can be deep spots and sandbars that you gotta float and get across and continue to hold speed. Around 2003, 2004, I think I started riding boards that changed my perspective on weak waves. I worked on a flick called Sprout with Thomas Campbell and I rode a 5.6 skip fry. That was like really eye-opening, like the speed that I could generate on that board. And I was surfing a long left point in Costa Rica and it was just, it was really challenging. You like, you know, <laughs> the dynamics of that board and the fins and you know, the, the straight back keels, finding that sweet spot and understanding how to really put that board on rail was, was interesting. But years later is when I decided to go down the road of designing my own fish, the go fish. And I took it to France. I brought it along thinking I was gonna ride it often. I didn't get to ride it. France, the waves are just more intense. There's a lot of energy and we had pumping swell the whole time and I was just riding short boards. And finally, like the day before I was leaving, we just had this glorious day, the swell died. It was offshore all day, and we went down for a little afternoon session. We pulled up this little sandbar, and it was just the cleanest, funnest, and I was just like waiting for that. Like there's just times when you have a surfboard that you just waiting for that moment to, to sh <laughs> enlighten you, right? To show you like, here it is. This is why you made that board. And somehow, from that session, in France, the go fish. Now we have the two fish. In Japan, this is the board I've been riding on this trip. Um, it is kind of a tweaked, modified, updated version of the go fish for those of you that are fans of the go fish. Um, and with a little twist of a seaside mixed in. Um, it used to be the go fish had a kind of a step channel that went down both rails and uh, that has been taken out but the concave is still there super deep single concave that runs down the middle but it kind of flattens out on the sides has little panels um, and all the way into a little bit of v on the tail concave here with a little v off the tail so Really, really fast and really fun and loose, skatey, alive. That's how I like my boards. The main thing I learned from the seaside that I brought into the two fish was really the bottom contours. I think the seaside bottom contours were um, not as abrupt and abrasive with the hard channel like the go fish. Everything smoothed out and really rolled in and um, more pleasing to the eye. I'm, I'm all about like what's pleasing to the eye. You know, when you pick something up and you look at it first and, and you put your hands on something. I mean, first, when you see it, you know, from far away, you're like, mm-hmm, yep, I like what I see. And then it's like the touch, the feel, you know, the rail, how does it feel in your hand, the lightness. And there's all these factors, right, that just go into it. And I love holding a board like this and appreciating the foil, you know, where you got like your, your main thickness running through here and the way it just tapers to the nose and through the tail, especially the tail. The tail really thins out, really knifey, turns, turns really easily. 
These are the, the kind of new updated keel that I've been working on. The traditional keel has a lot wider of a base and a real straight back, right? And those are difficult to ride. A lot of times they're double foiled. Um, they can be pretty tracky and hard to turn. So this is kind of a modernized keel, like combining, I don't know, more of a traditional twin fin, right? So just to give it a little more curve in the back of the fin, a tiny bit more upright, and just to liven it up, making it easier to surf, easier to turn, um, turn on a tighter radius. Going back to the moment I rode my skip fry, you know, down in Costa Rica, like I knew at that moment that a fish was always gonna live in my quiver. And there's always a time and a place to ride a fish. There's something about them that like I need to feel. And it's the speed, it's the, the effortlessness, effortlessness that it takes to generate speed and to hold speed and draw just completely different lines because you can generate so much speed and hold it through these long like turns and flowy cutties and um, it just it's something that like I want to have the rest of my life you know I just want to have fun and this like I love when I get to the beach and I look out and I'm like yes today is a day for the two fish you know that like that excites me and that's how it should be right you should like have a quiver of boards that like when you see the waves, there's just calls out, just says, you need to ride that board today.